Welcome. This is 49E3 and the title is Force, Field, Potential Energy and Potential. And we've come across these things before in general physics. One, we talked about forces and then we talked about gravitational field, little g. And then we talked about gravitational potential energy. We didn't talk much about gravitational potential and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to use some analogies from uh, our work with gravity in physics 1 when we're talking about uh, electrostatics and electric fields, etc. This is a very useful diagram. It's a schematic diagram. And what I find with this section is that people often, they get lost in the detail because there's a lot going on. And we can talk about these four parameters, force, field, electric, uh, uh, potential energy and potential. I can even talk about the difference in potential energy and the difference in potential. So to some extent, I could say there's six things we're talking about. And then we can imagine these things in uniform fields where mm, the lines of the field are parallel. And we can talk about these things in non-uniform fields where the lines of the field are not parallel. And a good example of that would be, for example, if you are considering um, uh, moving objects within a room, the value of G does not change within the room. So it's a constant parallel field, a uh, uniform field. But if you go from, say, uh, two times the Earth's radius to seven times the Earth's radius, then the value of G falls tremendously as you go further away. So there's an awful lot going on and we get, tend to get lost in the detail. So this is an attempt to try and give you a, a kind of global overview. So I'm imagining four bits. There's gravitational force and then there's gravitational field. And if you remember, we said that the field was, well, a couple of ways. We said the field was G equaled the force per mass and we said that G equaled big G big M over R squared. This was when we're dealing with gravity and this was also when we're dealing with gravity but the two ways are looking at the same thing. Um, if I want to go from gravitational field and figure out what the force on a given mass would be, I simply multiply the gravitational field by that mass. So I'd say F is equal to mg. Um, if I wanted, if I had the gravitational force and I wanted to know what the gravitational field was, I'd say G is equal to F over m. So this is what this bit's telling me. Now, if I want to go from a gravitational force to, say, a, a change in potential energy, I take the force and I multiply it by mm, the displacement of the force, Fd, and that, of course, equaled work done, and that, of course, equaled my change in my gravitational potential energy. Is that ringing a bell from, from physics one? And, of course, if you think about it, if F is equal to mg, this is mgd is equal to work, which is equal to change in gravitational potential energy. And you probably remember this as mgh. Remember that? mgh, gravitational potential energy. It's really the change in gravitational potential energy. So if I want to go from gravitational force and find out how much work is done, if I displace that gravitational force to a certain distance, I multiply by d. And if I want to go back, I divide by d. And then there's this new thing called gravitational potential. And gravitational potential is a bit like a gravitational field. It is the gravitational potential energy UG per mass. It's how many joules per kilogram you have. And you get that by dividing by 
mass. And if you have the gravitational potential, you can get to the gravitational potential energy by multiplying by mass. Um, there's no symbol typically for gravitational potential. We don't talk about it much. And that's, in a way, we've got too much going on in physics, one to care so much about it. But it, it exists. In a way, the two at the bottom are abstractions. They're saying, here's a planet, here's a point. What's the field at that point caused by this planet? That's that guy. Or, here's a planet, here's a point. What um, uh, energy had to be used to get that planet, that, that point there? <laughs> and that's uh, gravitational potential energy. Uh, what are they measured in? Well, this is going to be in newtons. And this is going to be in newtons per kilogram. And over here it's newton meters, which is joules. And this is joules per kilogram. So my message is, if you remember this diagram, you know if you want to go from one to the other, whether you should be multiplying by a distance or dividing by a distance, or multiplying by mass or dividing by mass. Notice, distance and dis distance or displacement and masses and masses. Well, it turns out that for electrical systems, it's somewhat similar. If we want to go from electric field to electric force, it's not a mass, it's a Q multiplied by a little Q. And if I want to go from the force back to the field, divide by a Q. If I want to go from joules, from, from newtons to joules, I've got to multiply by D and divide by D. I've got to multiply by d, and if I want to go backwards, I divide by d. And the same goes here. Can you see this pattern? So, let's have a look at this question. So, this is basically getting you to recall this diagram. It says, recalling the notes, uh, what does the x stand for? And if you look, i got a w, i got an x, i got a y, i got a z. So, you've got to look at the two things. And this is electric force, and this is change in electrical potential energy. And if you took a force and you multiplied it by a displacement, you'd get joules. But that's not the arrow we're on. We're on the arrow going the other way. So this will be divided by a displacement. And so you're going to divide by a displacement. Let's just work through some of the others while we're here. If it was... Uh, uh, electric force and you wanted to get to electric field you would divide by Q so W is divide by Q and this one will be multiplied by Q and then by analogy if you want to go from electric field to change in electric potential you're gonna multiply by D and if you want to go the other way you're going to divide by D and if I want to go between electric potential energy and electric potential, if I want to go from electric potential to electric potential energy, I'm going to multiply by Q. And if I'm going to go the other way, I'm going to divide by Q. So just, just learn this pattern. And then as we do examples, you'll see how it, how it works out quite nicely. But get this pattern down so that you don't get lost in the detail. There we have it.